Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa visited yesterday the kingdom's distinguished guest, Egyptian President Adul Fattah Al Sisi, at his residence. They reviewed the long standing solid Bahraini Egyptian relations and ways to bolster them in various fields, underscoring the importance of continuous consultation and coordination between the two countries for the best interests of their brotherly peoples. His Majesty King Hamid lauded President Al Sisi's brotherly visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, asserting that it reflects the depth and strength of the state steadily progressing relations between Bahrain and Egypt. His Majesty the King voiced pride in the historical leading role played by brotherly Egypt in serving the Arab and Islamic nations, unifying stances and enhancing joint Arab action, stressing that a strong Egypt is positive for all Arab countries. For his part, the Egyptian President expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamid for his role in strengthening and enhancing the Kingdom of Bahrain's relations with his country. He valued highly Bahrain's supportive stances towards Egypt and its people, wishing the kingdom further progress and prosperity under His Majesty the King's leadership. His Majesty King Hamid and President al-Sisi then reviewed the latest regional and global developments and the need to coordinate unified in dealing with them. They also discussed other issues of common interest. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today the United Nations Development Programme Director, Helen Clark, at Trafal Palace, who is on an official visit to Bahrain, representing the United Nations, to the Manama Dialogue 2015. He stressed that health, education, housing and creating job opportunities are priorities in the government's strategy reflecting key fundamentals for sustainable development. He added that besides competently achieving the UN Millennium Development Goals, Bahrain is resolved to complete a new success story by achieving the post-2015 development agenda. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister urged concerted efforts for a more prosperous region and enhanced cooperation to overcome tensions and conflicts in the region. He said people in the region have had enough of conflict and war, noting that unstable security and economic conditions are an impediment to further development. He also affirmed the political and economic challenges in many parts of the world should not discourage the UN and its specialised agencies from continuing to support the development effort in developing countries and people's aspirations for a decent and prosperous life. His Royal Highness the Premier highlighted the need for the international community to act more effectively to fast-track sustainable development by tackling the causes of conflicts and wars which are destroying nations' resources. He said that protecting the security and stability of mankind is a common responsibility and every international effort aimed at ensuring people's security has to be backed, pointing out Bahrain's keenness to support the pioneering role of the UNDP in achieving the Millennium Development Goals and boosting human development worldwide. The UNDP director lauded His Royal Highness the Premier's unflinching support and cooperation between Bahrain and the UNDP. She also hailed the Kingdom's success in achieving the Millennium Development Goals, stressing the keenness of the UNDP to further bolster cooperation with Bahrain.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Rafah Palace today the senior Singaporean Minister of State for Foreign and Defence Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Maliki bin Osman, who is currently visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the 11th Regional Security Summit, the IISS Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness commended the development and growth of bilateral economic, trade and investment cooperation ties between Bahrain and Singapore and affirmed Bahrain's keenness to further consolidate bilateral cooperation with Singapore in view of strong friendship, understanding and coordination regarding many regional and international issues. He said the region is experiencing a big challenge in terms of sustainability of development amidst an unstable economic and security atmosphere. He also said the Kingdom of Bahrain extends the hands of cooperation with all nations, including Southeast Asian nations, which have economic capabilities and ambitions for development and prosperity similar to Bahrain's. His Royal Highness welcomed any Bahraini Singaporean cooperation to consolidate bilateral ties and reap the benefits for both countries as well as promoting higher levels of cooperation. The Singaporean Foreign and Defence Affairs Minister of State expressed his gratitude and appreciation to the Prime Minister for his attention in further bolstering bilateral cooperation relations, praising the current development and progress of Bahrain in all fields. He went on to express his country's keenness on further expanding relations in order to achieve the shared interests of both countries. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister yesterday welcomed delegates from across the world to Bahrain's 11th Manama Dialogue Security Conference. In partnership with the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Bahrain has led the region's foremost security conference for over 10 years and the conference continues to provide a unique forum that facilitates multilateral engagement and private diplomacy in resolving conflict under the reform project of His Majesty the King. During the opening of the event, President Al-Sisi delivered the opening address which detailed the complexity of issues currently facing the region. The Crown Prince welcomed President El Sisi's comments regarding the need for social and economic development to underpin stability and long-term positive change. His Royal Highness stressed that the urgency with which solutions must be found to address the human suffering within the region has never been greater. The Crown Prince emphasised that all countries must recognise that long-term stability is built on the foundations of hope, opportunity and prosperity, and that the principles of tolerance and coexistence must inform every aspect of regional reform. He went on to emphasise that it is exactly these principles that are being opposed by the violent extremists in the region who distort religion in order to disrupt development. His Royal Highness said with regards to Syria, the international community must admit the difficult truth that it has collectively failed the millions of innocent people so badly affected by the civil war. He highlighted that the Syrian people now constitute a fifth of the 60 million people in the world displaced as a result of crises. The Crown Prince highlighted the GCC-led efforts in Yemen demonstrate the way in which diplomatic efforts can be aligned with military collaboration in order to decisively address conflict. In conclusion, the Crown Prince stressed that this year's Manama Dialogue takes place at a crucial juncture as a number of critical issues are challenging security across the region and the world, and conveyed hope that the serious and productive discussions that take place over the next two days will make a significant contribution to solutions that foster lasting regional stability.
His Royal Highness Prince, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday met the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Adolf Fattah Al Sisi. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted that President Al Sisi's opening address sets the tone for the 11th edition of the Manama Dialogue and that his participation underscores Egypt's strong support to events which promote dialogue on ways to tackle strategic security issues. His Royal Highness then emphasised the vital role Egypt plays in addressing key challenges impacting regional stability. His Royal Highness also stressed Egypt's continuous support to GCC countries' efforts to achieve long-term regional security. He went on to highlight that President al-Sisi's visit to Bahrain reflects the depth and strength of bilateral ties which exists across various sectors. In response, President al-Sisi expressed his pleasure at participating in this year's Manama Dialogue. President al-Sisi went on to extend his appreciation for the Kingdom's continued support to Egypt's growth and development and wished Bahrain further prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today bid farewell to the President of Egypt, Adul Fattah Al Sisi. During his visit to Bahrain, His Majesty King Hamad met with President Al Sisi and reviewed the long-standing ties between Egypt and Bahrain. President Al Sisi also gave the opening address at the 11th edition of the Manama Dialogue, in which he outlined the complex security issues impacting the region and the need to focus on social and economic development to support long term stability. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, and a number of senior officials were also in attendance. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the United States Deputy Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and the Commander at the United States Central Command, General Lloyd J. Austin. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of strategic partnership between regional powers and the international community in order to deal with the current situation in Syria. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed the importance of enhancing the historic strategic cooperation between the Kingdom and the United States in order to participate in maintaining the region's security and stability. His Royal Highness also hailed the Saudi-led Arab coalition operations in Yemen in order to maintain security and stability in the region. Both sides also reviewed a number of regional and international developments of mutual interest. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak met the Saudi Foreign Minister Adul al Jubair on the sidelines of the IISS Manama Dialogue. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak stressed that the historic, brotherly, consolidated ties between the Kingdom and Saudi Arabia in various fields. The meeting discussed the recent regional and international developments as well as the results of the Syrian peace talks in Vienna.
Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received Arab League Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al Arabi on the occasion of his participation in the IISS Manama Dialogue 2015. He welcomed him, underlining the key role of the Arab League in boosting pan Arab work in various fields amid fast paced regional developments and the challenges they pose, which require more coordination between the Arab countries. Both sides also discussed developments at both Arab and regional levels. The Arab League Secretary General expressed appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister upon his welcome, lauding the role of Bahrain in protecting Arab issues. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak met the United Nations Development Programme Director Helen Clark on the sidelines of the IISS Manama Dialogue. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak hailed the role and efforts of the UNDP in achieving development projects and lauded the strong ties and cooperation between Bahrain and the United Nations. The director of the UNDP expressed appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister upon his welcome and on the occasion of participating in the IISS Manama Dialogue. Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa received the Lebanese Interior Minister Nahad Al Mashnouk today on the occasion of his participation in the 11th edition of the IISS Manama Dialogue. The Deputy Premier lauded the strength of Bahraini Lebanese relations and the keenness of the two countries to continue their efforts to enhance the joint action and cooperation. The Lebanese Interior Minister conveyed greetings and wishes of further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Deputy Premier discussed with the Lebanese Minister ways to bolster bilateral cooperation as well as issues of mutual concern. The Lebanese Interior Minister is currently on a visit to the Kingdom to participate in the Manama Dialogue, which commenced yesterday. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received in the presence of Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the British parliamentary delegation headed by MP Sir Alan Duncan, Chief of Public Security Major General Tariq Al Hassan and General Director of Interior Ministry Court Major General Riyad Eid Abdullah attended the meeting as well. The Minister welcomed the United Kingdom delegation members who are in a visit to Bahrain to participate in the 11th session of the Manama Dialogue highlighting the importance of the topics of the forum that attract high international participation as part of joint efforts to reinforce regional security. Interior Minister informed the delegation of the efforts of the Interior Ministry to protect security and general order and ensure the safety of all citizens and residents in addition to providing human rights guarantees as part of the comprehensive reform project of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The meeting reviewed bilateral relations between the two friendly countries and security cooperation, along with topics of common interest. For his part, Sir Duncan hailed the vision of the Interior Minister and progress Bahrain has made since 2011. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in the plenary session at the Manama Dialogue entitled American Policies and Regional Security, in which he affirmed that the situation in Syria is the most challenging for countries in the region and the crisis is not limited to these countries in view of its multiple grave effects. Sheikh Khalid said that the main reason for what is taking place in Syria was that a vacuum was created after 2011 that allowed terrorist groups like Daesh to establish strongholds and then use those territories as a launching pad outside Syrian borders. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that the solution in Syria must be based on returning the Syrians to a state of unity as soon as possible, adding that Syrians must be given enough hope and belief to remain in Syria and work towards building a better future. Sheikh Khalid said that the presence of Daesh in Syria is not an impediment to a political solution between the Syrians. It is what makes the necessity of a political solution all the more pressing. The Minister of Foreign Affairs said that Iran has provided sanctuary and financial support for those charged with conducting terrorist acts in Bahrain. It hosted Bahraini citizens in the IRGC training camps where potential terrorists learn skills such as IED construction, marksmanship and weapons smuggling. Iran has also conducted smuggling operations to bring in explosives and weapons including C4, Claymore mines and AK-47 assault rifles. On the chances of improving relations with Iran, Sheikh Khalid said that the matter is pending on the behaviour of Iran and its commitment to good neighbourly relations, as well as non-interference in the kingdom's internal affairs. On developments in Yemen, the Minister of Foreign Affairs said that the GCC is committed to continue its strategic role for the return of security and stability to Yemen, eradicate groups that turned against the country's legitimacy and try to destroy state institutions as well as reneged on their commitments to spread chaos and terror. Sheikh Khalid pointed out that the GCC military intervention in Yemen was not taken lightly. It was the final option after running out of all diplomatic and political means and that this intervention would end once security and peace return to Yemen. He praised the major role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the rest of the GCC states as well as the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Centre. With regards to developments in Al-Aqsa Mosque and continued attacks by the Israeli occupation authorities, the foreign minister held Israel responsible for the deterioration of the situation in Palestinian lands due to continued Israeli violations of international law that criminalize the harming of religious sites and ensure the protection. He stressed the rejection of targeting Al-Aqsa Mosque, calling for sufficient protection to the Palestinian people and safeguarding of the holy site. In conclusion, Sheikh Khalid affirmed the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain by working with other countries to bolster security and peace, as well as taking all measures that ensure maintaining peace in the region. The International Institute of Strategic Studies, Manama Dialogue, is in its second day with discussions ongoing on regional security and stability. More now in this report from Marie Claire Honeywell. It's day two of the IISS Manama Dialogue and discussions are in full swing, with delegates speaking openly and in earnest about the issues at hand. It's going very well. Issues are being discussed in detail. Questions are very relevant and everyone speaking with uh, uh, in, in an honest manner and in an open manner and I think it's very useful. The summit offers the opportunity to discuss regional security problems in detail and put forward guidelines for possible solutions. I don't think an event like this can come up with a solution. What it can do is make the relationships and have the conversations uh, that can then influence the principles. It'll be the principles, uh, uh, the, the foreign ministers and the states concerned that have to come up with the solutions alongside the other actors, which are the uh, representatives of some of the non-state forces, the alliance of uh, re resistance in Syria, for example, uh, but also the Syrian regime. They have got to, they've got to sit down and have that conversation about the transition. While it is not expected that the dialogue will find instant solutions to the issues at hand, there is a hope that it will result in a collective review of the United Nations Charter to reflect the changing times. I myself hope that there will be a recommendation that the uh, collective security system of the United Nations will be looked at in a comprehensive manner, not in a piecemeal manner, and that the United Nations will review the charter of uh, uh, which created the organization after 70 years so so many things changed and it's about time to do so reporting from the 11th annual IISS Manama dialogue for Bahrain television I'm Marie Claire Honeywell